Hello viewers, welcome to Chris Crime Diaries. This is your Chris Barker. Lee Bishop arrived at his daughter and son in home laws in Winnetka, Illinois, on April 7, 1990. Winnetka, a wealthy Chicago suburb, seemed like the ideal place for Richard and Nancy Langer to purchase their first home and raise their family. It was a secure neighborhood with good schools. However, as soon as he entered the house, he realized something was wrong. Nancy's purse was flipped over, and the contents were scattered. Mr. Bishop went down the stairwell to the basement and found his daughter's body in a pool of blood. His son-in-law, who was also deceased, was nearby. Because of the brutality in the unlikely killer, this case would shock the safe community of Winnetka. Nancy Ellen Bishop was born in Winnetka on May 14, 1964. She was the eldest of three sisters. Nancy's sisters described her as having a great sense of humor and being a lot of fun. Nancy, despite her success at the prestigious New Trier High School, aspired to be a wife and mother. She met Richard Langert in her early 20s. Richard Alexander Langert was born in the month of November 1959. Nancy and Richard fell in love and married in 1987. Richard was described by Nancy's family as tall, handsome, and all-around nice guy. Nancy and Richard were excited to start a family. Nancy found out she was pregnant in early 1990. You know, Nancy and Richard were just in their prime. They loved it, Nancy's mother, Joyce, said. Unfortunately, Richard and Nancy's dream of becoming parents was never realized. Richard Langert was discovered with one hand bound and a single gunshot wound to the back of his head. Nancy had been shot three times and had written B.U.R. on the hall with her own blood. However, the writing was initially misinterpreted as a heart and you, followed by an R. As she died, police believed she was writing a message to her family, expressing her love. To gain access to the house, a glass cutter was used. Police described some aspects of the crime as professional, while others suggested an inexperienced killer. There were no hints as to who committed the murder. Richard and Nancy both worked for a coffee company, according to police. Coffee companies must import coffee beans, which have previously been used to mask drug odors during international trafficking. Police investigated this possibility, but found no evidence that the Langerts were involved in any illegal activities. Nothing could have been further from the truth than the media's description of this as a professional hit. David Byro was born on the 18th of May 1973. David and his older brother were raised in Winnetka, where David's older brother excelled at New Trier High School. David, on the other hand, struggled. He was frequently in trouble for playing practical jokes, some of which were inappropriate. He once filled balloons with urine and threw them at children. David used to stay out all night and go to bars when he was a teenager. He installed a padlock on his door, which his parents refused to remove. He was in trouble for starting fires along the railroad tracks, which his father expected him to outgrow. David's behavior worsened when he opened a bank account with a fraudulent check. His father repaid the bank, and no charges were brought against him. David developed a crush on a hitman and aspired to be just like him. David once fired his pellet gun from his bedroom window at a pedestrian on the sidewalk. He was brought to the police station this time and gave a false name. The matter was settled privately, and it is unknown whether David faced any consequences. His misbehavior worsened as he stole several items. On August 20, 1987, while eating breakfast, David's family noticed a chemical odor in the milk. The milk contained wood alcohol, and an empty container of wood alcohol was discovered in David's bedroom. He intended to poison his entire family and then watch them die. David's older brother was terrified of him. His family decided to admit him to a psychiatric facility specializing in adolescence at this point. David admitted that he would be detrimental to them and the community. The hospital stated that David was a danger to the community and recommended long-term hospitalization. However, David's parents signed him out for a visit home after 58 days. David never came back to the facility. 
The doctors who were treating him described his parents as being uncooperative with his treatment and expressed concern that he was extremely dangerous. Despite medical advice, David's parents kept him at home. David attempted to obtain a gun in 1990 but did not have a FOID card. He completed a fraudulent application for a FOID card using a friend's identification and his picture, but he became frustrated when the card did not arrive on time. He confronted his mother, who explained that she received the card in the mail and gave it to David's attorney in order to keep him from obtaining a gun. David demanded the card from his lawyer. When the lawyer refused to return it, David Byro threatened to break into his office. He did exactly that when he broke into the office. However, he did not accept the card because he discovered a gun and bullets in the desk. He stole the gun and began making plans. Following the murders of Nancy and Richard Langer, David advised a classmate that he needed to leave Winnetka or risk being arrested. When his friend questioned him about the statement, David responded, what is the worst thing I could have done? Wilson. Killed someone, said his friend. David allegedly told his friend that was exactly what he had done, confirming his friend's suspicions that he was responsible for the Langert murder. His friend, initially unsure whether David was telling the truth, kept this information to himself. David shared future plans for more crimes with this friend over the course of several months. He told his friend that he intended to rob the Winnetka bank and murder the employees. Fearing that David would commit additional crimes, his friend came forward in September 1990, nearly six months after the crime. This witness statement was used by the investigators to obtain a search warrant for David Byro's home. They discovered a gun in David's possession that matched the ballistics, the same gun he stole from his attorney. They also discovered a glass cutter, which was consistent with the crime scene. More evidence was found on David's hard drive. Threats of future violence and crime were included. David Byro was arrested and charged with the murders of Richard and Nancy Langert in early October 1990. According to David's friend and the prosecution's star witness, David revealed previously unknown details about the murder to him. Additionally, he told his friend he killed Nancy and Richard because they were annoying. His father and Nancy's father had worked together for many years, but Nancy and David had never met. It is speculated that David was envious of Richard and Nancy because they were successful in their careers, had a nice home, and were expecting a child. Others believe David was simply a bad seed who wanted to kill someone for no reason other than to do so. The prosecution believes David Byro broke into Nancy and Richard Langert's home that night while they were out celebrating Nancy's father's birthday. When Nancy and Richard returned home, David was standing there with the gun pointed at them. Before ordering the couple to the basement, he fired a shot. He had one of Richard's hands cuffed, but Richard lunged at David. David shot him in the back of the head, instantly killing him. Nancy then begged for her life, stating that she was pregnant. She recognized David's face and knew he was. David shot her three times, once in the abdomen and twice in the chest. As she lay dying, she used her blood to write B-U-R, an incorrect spelling of Byro. She couldn't finish the O but used her last ounce of strength to track down her assailant. During the trial, David pointed the finger at another classmate, claiming that he was simply concealing the gun for the classmate. In court, he smirked and laughed frequently, leading observers to believe David Byro was pure evil. The community was taken aback that a 16-year-old from a prosperous neighborhood could commit such a violent and senseless crime. The jury found David Byro guilty of the murders of Richard, Nancy, and unborn baby Langert after a brief deliberation. He was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole. Due to his age, he was ineligible for the death penalty. Nancy's family sued David Byro to prevent him from profiting from his crime and were awarded a $41 million judgment, though they are unlikely to receive any financial compensation. David unsuccessfully appealed his conviction several times. Nancy's sister wrote a letter to David, whom she had chosen to forgive so that she would not harbor hatred in her heart, in 2012. David responded, finally admitting to the crime 22 years later. 
I believe the time has come for me to abandon the charade and be completely honest. I murdered your sister, Nancy, and her husband, Richard. I also want to express my heartfelt condolences and apologize to you, he wrote. He agreed to meet Nancy's sister in person. Nancy's sister finally met David Byro in person at Pontiac Correctional Center five months later. David, now 40 years old, looked nothing like the 16-year-old boy who had been convicted decades before. He admitted to the crime and provided details that almost exactly matched the prosecution's theory. Jean Bishop found it in her heart to forgive David, who faced a retrial after the Supreme Court ruled that mandatory life sentences for juveniles are unconstitutional. David requested that his life sentence for intentionally killing the Langert's unborn child be commuted to a lesser sentence. A judge ruled in 2022 that David Byro will be imprisoned for life without the possibility of parole. What are your thoughts on the David Byro's case? I really appreciate your input. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Be a part of the Chris Crime Diaries family and hit the subscribe button now.